this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be discussing what some of the characteristics of a quadratic function are. So, a reminder, in our previous video, we discussed what quadratic functions were, and we talked about how their parent function is generally written in the form of f of x equals x squared. Now, remember that f of x is what denotes it as a function, saying we have a function in terms of x, and that function is x squared. And so, anything coming off of this, any manipulation of this x squared, so even if we had like an x squared plus 3x plus 2, an x squared minus 4, a 2x squared, all of these things are just transformations of the graph of our parent function. And throughout the future videos, we're going to be discussing how each of these transformations affect where our function is going. So, in this video, we are just going to discuss what some of those characteristics are. So, we're going to discuss four different characteristics here. The very first thing that we want to discuss is notice that our shape, our quadratic, is a parabola, which means that it kind of looks like a U shape. Now, that parabola will either open up or it'll open down. In this case, with our parent function, it opens up. So you can see that it opens up, it's kind of like a smiley face. And our first characteristic point that we're going to notice is our vertex. Our vertex is the lowest point on a parabola that opens down, or it's the highest point on a parabola that opens up. So if we have a parabola that looks like this, our vertex is going to be this spot on the top. If we have a parabola that opens down, our vertex is the one at the bottom. And the vertex is important because we are, when we look at different forms of a parabola, so sometimes we write these quadratic functions as a standard form. If we write them in vertex form, that means we actually need to know what that point is. Now, surrounding that vertex form is actually this dotted line here, as you can see. And this dotted line here, it represents our axis of symmetry. So our axis of symmetry just discusses that from that point, everything is exactly symmetrical. So if we were to try to graph this function, so say we came over here and graphed it, what we would notice is as I put points into this graph here, so if I put zero in, I'd be a zero. If I put a one in, I'd get a one out. If I put a one in, a negative one in, I'd get a one out. If I put a two in, I'd get a four out, a negative two, a negative four, a three, I'd get a nine out. And you can see that right here at, y, at x equals zero, I have this axis of symmetry. And notice how when I go over one, it goes up one, regardless of the direction. It's symmetrical on either side. So that's that other, that's our second key thing that we care about here. And that's our axis of symmetry. And that divides the parabola exactly in half. So imagine we folded it along that line, it would line up exactly. And that axis of symmetry is always going to be the x value of our vertex. And that goes either way. So if someone told you the axis of symmetry was zero, then we know our vertex has an x value of zero. If someone told us our vertex was at 3, 2, that would imply to us that our axis of symmetry is at x equals 3. They kind of work hand in hand that way. The last things that we want to discuss here are these ideas of increasing and decreasing. So notice this parabola, how it switches. It goes down on one side and then it switches to the up on the other. We are always going to have one side decreasing and one side increasing. And we're going to discuss what happens there. And that decreasing and increasing will always switch at our vertex. That's the beauty of our vertex, is that's the point where we switch from going down to going up, or vice versa, from going up to going down. That's that pinnacle point right at the top of the roller coaster where you're not going up or going down right before you go down or right before you head into your uphill. And that vertex changes that difference between decreasing and increasing. So we just want to take a look at a couple of the examples in which we're identifying these characteristics. So let's take a look at this first one. Here's a graph here. We have this vertex. It's at negative 1, negative 2. Our axis of symmetry, therefore, is at x equals negative 1. Notice how these two are the same numbers. And our function decreases for all of the x values until it hits x equals negative 1. And then it switches, and now we're increasing. So that is what happens there. So now let's take a look at these graphs and identify some of those characteristics. So this first one we're going to do all together. So first, I want to find my vertex, and that's going to be the lowest point, and that's right here. So I look, what is my x value here? My x value is 2, and my y value is negative 3. 
So that's where I want to start. Now remember, this here is our vertex. There is a relationship between our vertex and our axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry here is going to be the same as our X value. And so our axis of symmetry, or our AOS, that's going to be when X equals 2, right? Because that's that X value. And notice how these are the same number. They are always going to be that way. And then the last thing we want to look at is when is our function increasing and decreasing. So remember, on one side of our graph, it's going to be increase. One side of our axis of symmetry, it's going to be increasing. The other side, it's going to be decreasing. When it opens up, the left side will be decreasing and the right side will be increasing. When it opens down, then it'll be the opposite. So in this case, this side is decreasing and this side is increasing. So we are decreasing, if we write this in function notation, we are decreasing from negative infinity from x is x is defined as negative infinity all the way up to 2. Right? And it includes that, and we don't include that point 2 because at 2, it's not doing anything. And then we are increasing when x is going to be greater than 2, right? That might be a better way to phrase it using that absolute value. So when x is less than 2, we're decreasing, we're increasing when x is greater than 2. And that's that characteristic. So now I want you to give it a try on this next one. Go ahead and take a second, pause the video, try to identify our vertex. So these are the four things. We want to identify our vertex, our axis of symmetry, where we are increasing, and where we are decreasing. So go ahead and pause the video. When you finish, unpause it and see, check out the results. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to, check, to work this out on your own. So here are those four things identified, those characteristics here. Our first thing is our vertex was at negative three. Sorry, that is a typo there on my end at negative three, seven. And then our axis of symmetry here is at x equals a negative three. And I, we can easily tell those numbers have to be the same. Our graph is increasing on the left and decreasing on the right, and that's because it's open down. So it increases when x is less than negative three. And then as x goes from negative three to infinity, it's going to be decreasing. And that is how we identify those characteristics of a quadratic function and its graph. So those four characteristics that we care about here are the vertex, our axis of symmetry, where it's increasing, and where it's decreasing.